oh man this is a sad situation isn't it this might be a really really tricky situation for everybody involved but it's also i think a teachable moment for all i think it's a very much a teachable moment so it seems like this video featuring these three women who are involved in the la stand-up comedy scene the two ladies on the left annie liederman i think her name is and um what's the girl's name esther something and obviously kalila on the right is the girlfriend of bobby lee from the tiger belly podcast so all three of these ladies have you know they've been around the scene they've known what's going on i guess they sat down and for whatever reason a topic came up about you know how douchey men could be and it seems like annie liederman is alluding to the fact that allegedly Brendan Shaw may have been the person that she was talking about in the story who made a move on her when she knew that he had a wife and he had a family and whatnot. And then Kalila pipes up and says, yeah, he made a move on me also. Awful, awful stuff, right? Because, you know, it's embarrassing. No, it's equivalent of like your DMs getting, like, especially if you forget you're doing, just imagine you're a decent dude and you try to like jump in girls DMs and then they all get exposed. Even though you did said nothing wrong, it's still embarrassing you don't want everyone to see you horny on the timeline you know what I mean? you don't want to see people you don't want to see you don't want anyone to see your horny bubbles like what you try and get off what emojis you use what language what verbiage um, when you when are you sending these messages you don't want us, anyone to see that you want it just to be t be between you and the other person but sometimes in life when you're an absolute piece of you know a piece of shit to people they can sometimes get joy out of the fact of embarrassing her. So I think a lot of this is coming from a real kind of hatred, it feels like, which is really bad because it's one thing being curved or being left on red with somebody who just wasn't interested. It happens. It's brutal. It can hurt your ego. But somebody feeling somewhat gleeful and happy that they're going to be, you know, giving you a sleepless night, that's really a sign that you are a piece of shit. So I'm going to play this clip and then I'm going to give my other comments on the other side regarding this situation and why I think in general this could be a teachable moment for all dudes, especially due to work in some sort of creative industry where a lot of there's a lot of mixing of the opposite sexes and stuff and lines can be blurred. I think it's really important to keep some things in mind. So let's play the clip and hear what Annie has to say regarding this alleged encounter with Baba or somebody else. Who knows? It salts me too because I when guys do that it makes me so like you just think I'm that big yeah I had a guy that was like why don't you walk me to my truck this married guy where I'm like <laughs> and we know him I'm not gonna say who it is but um he's like know him. why don't you give me a walk why don't you get like you should walk me to my truck I'm like so what I can blow you <laughs> like what Wait, like, who was it Oh, but it's just like, ew. it's like, why would I? Wait, like, I love that we have the same people that. Yes, that the same ones come for us. Want us to walk for you? To oh, he came for me so hard and we know his. Pause. He came for me. Pause. Kalele, pause. He came for me. Pause. This chick. And like, the thing that I think is like, at least a little Esther, bit better. <laughs> the fact Again, not to stop all the time, but isn't it also obvious that women there's no there's no there's no one that hates each other more than other women and there's some sort of like i don't want to say there's, there's some sort of um they get some weird it sounds like they got some weird satisfaction of the fact that they obviously have this shared experience which in some ways is somewhat validating because it means you know they're they're desirable but there's also this idea that oh he's got a missus at home but he still wants me do you know what I mean? So it's like they've got this kinship between each other, like, oh, we're two hot bad bitches, but they're also thinking who's hotter. And then there's the other side of it where it's like, oh, he's got she's got he's got a or he's got a um a lady at home and he was still trying to get in my DMs. Like let everyone let the world know. Because some thinking about it also, it's like like I said, it's either this girl really hates him or this is just a way to kind of pat themselves on the back a little bit. It's a little bit of a humble brag, but you know, let's let it continue. <laughs> Esther, he's coming for you. Don't worry. Yet. That is, it's just crazy. Now that you washed your hair, maybe. Esther, it's on maybe New now that you washed your hair. On New Year's Eve, while he was having dinner with his family, he was like, What are you doing tonight? This year? What are maybe you three doing years here? ago. He was like, What are you doing tonight? I was like, Left him on red. He but was he like, knows well, I hate that I'm with my yes. in laws right now. Do you want to go? He At did least that, to that me. is like, he thinks you're going to be a partner in crime. Like, for me, I was like single. I'm like, Why would I, like, 
It's not like we're deviants together. It's like you think because I was thinking about like if we go to your truck, okay? Mm -hmm. Like let's say I was like in, which I was never in at all. <laughs> let's say I was in. It's like I love this. So wait, we walk to my car. I finish my spot, being very good at comedy. You not being good at comedy, and then <laughs> that's so, a clue. By the way, I don't want like to be seen with you. That's I don't. The biggest clue you could ever give. And like, so you're not good at comedy, and then you want me to walk you to your car, like. So I, let's say, okay, so I'm literally like, I, I leave a sea of adoring fans, okay? Like, I leave a sea of like people being like, can I take pictures with you? You're amazing. Where'd you get your outfit? It's Esther Club. You can get it on, or it's Sleepover by Esther. You can get it on her website and Esther on Ice. I'm like in the middle of just like joy. You want me to stop like what I've worked my ass off to do? You want me to stop doing that so I can walk you <laughs> To a car that's more expensive than the one I'm living in at that time. <laughs> to then, yes. to what? Suck your dick? Like, I'm not coming in this situation. Like, what is this? <laughs> Where's my orgasm in this scenario? There's no, like, it wasn't what, are you going to bang me doggy style while the, <laughs> the door guys look fucking Christopher Columbus me? <laughs> no. <laughs> what is the incentive? But I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, what would I get out of this? Mm -hmm. That I get to suck your unfunny dick? Like, I'm good. <laughs> brutal. Brutal. Now, this is, I think, a teachable moment, in my opinion, because I feel like most dudes have done something similar where you've kind of worked in a workplace where maybe there was a, an abundance of the opposite sex. And sometimes working in those kind of workplaces, especially if you work there long enough, you can get, it's not beer goggles, but you get those weird work goggles where you start seeing things that aren't actually there and you start developing feelings of people that probably aren't necessarily rooted in any kind of truth just because you just spend so much time around them. Especially back in the day when we used to all work in flipping offices, right? Or in actual, we actually have to leave our homes to go to play, especially if you have an office job. Most people, office jobs have to kind of work remotely or you do the split thing. But when you spend your entire day at your workplace, usually in my experience working in offices you also spend your evenings with the same people that you worked with because you went to unwind and kind of forget about the day which was which usually turned into an opportunity to just gossip about what happens at work which is always annoying the last thing i want to do is be at work and then leave have a drink with a work friend and then spend all the time gossiping about people that work there but you know it happens all the time it's hard to fight it because people just love to gossip about people that they work with but it is what it is but sometimes along the line you can build you can kind of feel, you can start to have feelings for people just because you're around them all the time. And you start to feel, oh my God, you know, especially if you've got somebody that you're with, maybe I'm with the wrong person, I should be with her. But it's like, no, it's just, you shared some, you, you've got like a shared connection because you work in this place and there's a kinship there. But I also think a step above that is when it comes to the creative fields, when it comes to stuff like, you know, working in nightlife, you know, DJ, uh, artist, comedian, band, whatever it may be. I think, there should be i wouldn't say a rule but you you should probably stick to some sort of rule that you don't shit where you eat in general because i think personally the pursuing people that you work with in terms of you know even romantically and then actually you want to date them and not just you want to bang it's not worth it it really isn't because that blurring of lines can never be unblurred and also for me i feel like because i've done it myself and i know how terrible i felt about it it just feels conniving it feels as if you were playing a game and pretending to be the friend and then once you got the friend pass and they were comfortable around you you snuck in and said surprise you know what i mean i want to suck it pussy you know? that's what it felt. and that's not good no one wants that i think even if it's even if that surprise is creepy now it's probably better to get it out in the open first when you meet them like hey nice to meet you i want to suck it pussy and if they say no it'll hit you in the face at least you, you don't know where you stand but pretending to be that person's friend, trying to help them out with their career, giving them advice and all this stuff, shoulder to lean on, and then slipping your hand down below, that's really gross and out of hand, completely out of hand and unacceptable. And if anything, it doesn't help. It doesn't help kind of breed a kind of safe working environment for people because everyone's going to feel like especially females they always feel like they have to kind of have eyes in the back of their head. And it also for me, I'm just thinking also kind of weirdly enough because i heard a, a few people like you know burt kreischer and stuff complain about people like nikki glazer no nikki glazer, um chelsea handler and other comedians like who's the other one the other blonde lady who had a netflix special who's got like a really you know she's cute but she's got a really like she's a bit stern face i forgot her name but anyway there's a couple of comedians 
who a lot of those guys say are a bit standoffish and maybe a bit bitchy and whatnot. But I, now I've kind of figured out why. Because essentially, when they were coming up, I think, they had to navigate all this nonsense that Annie's speaking about. You know, these, you know, um, uh, these, uh, these approaches that you didn't invite, you know, creepy comments, bloody blah, 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 propositions. So it's no surprise when these ladies actually make it that and making it basically means you don't have to hang around at the comedy store anymore you don't have to maybe hang around in the parking lot you can just do your set and leave or you get a prime set and you just literally jump into a car and go somewhere else and it's no surprise they do that and they completely separate themselves from those comedians and kind of hang out with the more you know hollywood type people who maybe produce shows or you know own networks or whatnot that's what they usually do or maybe just straight up celebrities and actors and stuff it makes more sense because they maybe feel more safe around them because they may be a bit lower in the rungs on the terms of importance and they can just maybe blend in and just hang out but it does explain why those people run away it does explain a lot it really does explain because if this is what they have to deal with and they're not that prominent and i can you know even though they're all cute don't get me wrong it's not as if they're all flipping 10 out of 10s either so imagine if you're slightly more attractive and you also maybe give the hint that you might be down for things imagine how much imagine how much stuff you have to wade through and something to put up with so i think in general i've kind of made efforts in my own life to be a little bit more no to a little bit more to be upfront with my intention so if i am interested in somebody i want to let them know usually i've always been like that anyway but sometimes you can you know slip up but i've also wanted to make it plain and true that i'm also somebody you can be safe around like if if this relationship and connection started off as a friend thing it's going to stay as a friend thing if it changes in the in the end cool but i'm not going to you know initiate anything because i feel i feel like that just sends off the wrong signals especially if you're in a relationship you don't want to do that of course but if you, even if you're single i just think you're far better off just letting things happen especially when you're working in the same it's not it's not um it's completely different to somebody you just meet in the street of course you know you don't going to see them again you want to maybe try and pick them up or, or get their number call whatever people do that all the time but i mean when you're working with somebody day to day i think you owe them that level of respect to actually treat them like a peer by not seeing them as a sexual object it's difficult when you're a dude and you got a penis cool but try it because in general what ends up happening because if you don't try it this is what happens they're laughing and they're joking about it but i'm sure at the time and they didn't feel too great about it right being told that basically you're you're no you, you're you're only as you're only good for a quick suck in the flipping car in a car park of this comedy store he didn't even have the he didn't even that's the thing about this story that's mad if it's true he didn't even offer to like take her out on a date or something like oh hey i've been checking you out i think you're cute um we obviously got a good connection you know things were different maybe i don't know whatever it was all just straight let me take you to my truck and you can give me a sloppy toppy it's like god damn it how to make a girl feel flipping validated and loved and respected and adored you know what i mean but again i don't know if it's true or not you know what i mean it's not my business and stuff i think this is way above my pay grade and stuff but it's also an indication if ever you needed it that this guy's reputation is just in tatters because for someone to come out and say this publicly means that they legitimately don't like you like for real don't like you because you know you she knows what this is going to do damage wise right this is a grenade this is like you know throwing a grenade in someone's house and casually walking away like this is going to cause a lot of drama and uh, <laughs> you know he probably has no one else to blame but himself about the situation but i think it is a um a teachable moment for everybody especially dudes to be like hey when you're in a work environment and you're with females especially and you you feel like you have feelings maybe have a wank maybe go outside and take a breath of fresh air have a glass of water chill out relax if it happens it happens but for the most part leave them alone try and be honestly try and be friends with girls in your scene that you're in and you'll probably have a better time trying to hook trying to get other girls to like you because usually if you're the dude that's able to because it's very rare there's not a lot of dudes that can just hang out with girls as friends because they always have this flipping monkey brain in them thinking i want to fuck i want to fuck i want to fuck so if you can turn that off and just hang out with people it actually makes you more desirable to other people it just does or it just makes you look like a fun person because you're not going out for the sole tension just to go and hook up i had that switch a few years ago where I, especially for me going out it went from when i was first going out to clubs and stuff it went from just me going out to kind of lose myself and forget about my home life and then it turned into me actually enjoying or maybe meeting new people especially friends or people i went to add on facebook especially back in the day my facebook friends list was like crazy it was like in the five thousands 
oh no, sorry, high four thousand because I don't think you can get above five thousand because I think they kept it at like four nine nine. But that's what was mostly going out for. And then if along the way something happened where I'm in the, maybe hooked up with somebody, bonus. But I wasn't going out there with the sole intention to hook up because I feel like it just it just emits off of you. It's like a stench. You just give off a of desperation, and no one wants that around them. No one wants desperate person. No one wants person that's just clout hungry, and no one wants a person that's just literally going out trying to get anything that moves you. I mean, that's just not going to work for you. But God damn it, what a crushing, crushing revelation to put out there. Again, I'm hoping it's not true for that guy because if it is, oof. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a, an interesting week for a minute. Interesting week. But yeah, we move in it.